seven beats. Hillary sends this one deep in the left. And that baby's out of here. Sours and he hammers that one deep to right center. Could it be back to back? Bradley rips that one down the right field line and the Hoosiers win. Scotty Bradley walk him off. Welcome into the Indiana Baseball pregame show. Zam Fiarley here with Josh Eastern. Indiana Baseball getting ready for a three-game weekend set against the Purdue Boilermakers. The game was supposed to be at 6 o'clock, but it got pushed up to 3.30 because there's rain in the forecast. But this isn't the first time Indiana's had to deal with rain this year. Yeah, absolutely nothing new. They had the whole Iowa series moved around. They only played two games then at Iowa City to start the Big Ten slate. Indiana State then was moved back a day. There have been plenty of games canceled. This is nothing new for this team. It's just another day here in Indiana. Yeah, but last week, Weekend against Butler, they were supposed to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Game got rained out on Thursday, doubleheader on Friday. Let's get you to the highlights from that one. Game one of the series, Matt Gorski at the plate, chops one to third, and the third baseman will go to second, but he throws it into right field. Indiana was trailing four to one, now it's four to two in the sixth inning. Now Feynman up at the plate, he hits one off of the pitcher, and one run's gonna score, he's gonna throw it over to first, but that one's wide as well. Butler getting sloppy here, all of a sudden, Indiana's tied it up. 4-4. Four four. Same inning still. 4-4 four is the score. Drew Ashley. Sacrifice fly to right field. That'll bring home Brian Feynman. Indiana up 5-4 to four after a couple of Butler errors. Now in the bottom of the ninth, Logan Sowers at the plate trying to win it, but it's a pass ball for the Bulldogs. Justin Walker comes home to score. Indiana wins it 6-5. to five. Indiana was helped out by poor Butler defense in Game 1, but in Game 2, their offense was hot. Ryan Feynman getting things going here in the first inning. A three RBI double clears the bases as Indiana goes up 3-0 early. And then Justin Walker later on in the first inning. A single through the left side. That's going to bring home two and make it 5-0 Indiana after one. Ryan Feynman was hot in this game. Six for eight between the two games in the doubleheader with six RBIs. He had five RBIs in this one as he brings home another run here in the fourth inning to just keep it going for Indiana up 8 to nothing now. And then later on, Scotty Bradley getting a pinch hit. And what's he going to do with it? Oh, he's just going to send that one into the seats. A big fly two-run shot for Scotty Bradley makes it 12 to nothing. Indiana would go on and win the second game of the series 13 to nothing. Now the Hoosiers going for the series sweep against the Butler Bulldogs. It's 3-2 in the sixth inning. They're trailing not anymore. Matt Gorski, his first big fly of the year. A two-run shot makes it 4-3. Indiana would not look back from there. Matt Lloyd keeps it going, rips a single into right field. Logan Kalitha is going to come around to score, make it 5-3 Indiana. Later on in the inning, Luke Miller sends a flare that gets down in front of the right fielder. It's going to come around to score Matt Lloyd. He's going to score to make it 6-3. to three. Indiana would take it 10-3 to three in the series finale. So Indiana got the three-game series sweep against Butler last weekend. They were supposed to play a midweek game against Ball State on Tuesday. That was canceled because of the weather. But now they head into this matchup against Purdue. Let's take a look at what Chris Lamonis, head baseball coach for Indiana, is looking forward to this rivalry weekend. Rivalry weekend, I guess. I mean, we talked about it as a ball club earlier in the week. We, we call it the water cooler weekend. It's um, it's a big deal to Indiana fans and Purdue fans. And we try to act. Like, we don't try to act like it's just a normal game. Um, the intensity is a little higher. It's still baseball. You still got to go out and execute and play the game. But uh, it means a little bit more when it's Purdue. Josh, one thing I'm really looking forward to this weekend is the pitching matchup between both these teams. Really good starting pitching. Good bullpens as well. Let's take a look at the probable pitchers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first off, it's going to be Jonathan Stever going on Friday for Indiana against Tanner Andrews. Two, I mean, aces of, of their respective staffs. Tanner Andrews comes in with an ERA just under two. Jonathan Stever had kind of a slower start to the season, but it's finally kind of getting it back on track. He's at a 3.32 ERA. He's going to have a lot of strikeouts. A 48 to 9 strikeout to walk ratio for him so far is absolutely a remarkable number right now. Paulie Milto then is going to go Saturday against Gareth Stroh. 
I mean, this this Friday Saturday pitching matchups. Two of the best in the Big Ten, honestly. Absolutely, and Indiana saw both of these guys last year at West Lafayette whenever Purdue actually took two out of three games in West Lafayette. Let's see what Chris Moss had to say about the pitching matchup. I think they got a couple older starters that have had uh, good careers in our league, and they've uh, been out there and done it. Uh, a couple really nice bullpen pieces, and um, they just compete. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, it's the same guys we faced last year, and we're throwing the same guys we threw last year. So it's just some veteran guys that, that know what the uh, – to do in those moments. So the pitching matchup this weekend should be phenomenal. We know Friday and Saturday for Indiana, it's going to be Jonathan Stever and Paulie Milto. But that Sunday spot for Indiana has been up in the air all season long. They've had five different guys make the starts. We expect Cam Beecham to be the starter on Sunday. But let's just take a look at the difference between Friday and Saturday for Indiana so far. Yeah, I mean, on, on Friday and Saturday, you have Stever and Milto, who have just been absolutely fantastic. 83 and a third innings pitched, a 2.81 ERA between the two of them. But then you go over to Sunday, you've had five different pitchers make Sunday starts, a 4.38 ERA right there, and, and, and that just shows you what the difference is between those two. They got to find a consistent Sunday starter, especially going in to the tournament this year. If they if, if they're lucky enough to, to be there and they keep up what they're doing now, they got to find that third starter. You can't go into a tournament potentially having to play two games in, in one day without a, 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 a third starter. But with Indiana being so good on Friday and Saturday, the starters, Pauly Milto, Jonathan Stever, it kind of allows their bullpen to pick up the slack on Sunday, and their bullpen has been phenomenal. Starting with B.J. Sable coming in, really the sidewinding lefty, he can get a lot of guys out. And then Cal Kruger and Matt Lloyd. Matt Lloyd's only been in there a handful of times, and yep. is, he's been pretty good, though. All those guys have been phenomenal. Yeah, it's been a really good bullpen, and it's always nice when you have – either Stever or Milto get you through six or seven innings, and that can really, really help you, especially when you have guys like B.J. Sable, Matt Lloyd, Cal Kruger. I mean, so far, an under two ERA for this bullpen group. And I mean, as, as you see, bullpen beauties, that, that mustache from B.J. Sable, very, very nice there. But I mean, that's the, that big three in the back end that can just come in and shut down a game. Absolutely. And then the pitching matchup as a whole from both sides, this is Indiana has the best ERA in the Big Ten, actually sixth best in the nation at 2.68. Purdue not too shabby as well, second best in the Big Ten. Let's take a look at the pitching matchup between the two teams and very similar between both of these teams, Indiana and Purdue. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you have Indiana coming in, the best ERA in the Big Ten, going up against the second best ERA in the Big Ten, but that's almost a full point there between Indiana and Purdue. Just shows the difference and just how dynamic and dominant this pitching staff is for Indiana. First in earn, earn runs, first in runs, uh, seventh in strikeouts. I mean, that opponent's batting average is also pretty good for, for both sides as well. So they're not going to give up a lot of hits on either side. This could be a matchup this weekend where it's dictated by the pitching. Yeah, and the guy who catches those pitchers, Ryan Feynman for Indiana, had some love for his pitchers. Every guy that comes out of pen fills up strikes. You got John, you got Paulie, you got those guys that are just coming in. They're filling up strikes and they're throwing hard. They're throwing the sliders for strikes. It doesn't matter what you tell them to throw at any count, they're going to do it for you. They throw everything with confidence. I mean, bullpen's the biggest key. For you to have a lead going in the six, you got to be able to hold it. And for them to come in and shove it like they have, that's huge for us. I mean, Cal's the biggest competitor you're ever going to find. I mean, he comes out of that bullpen, he just has confidence in everything he can throw. He's, I mean, he's a scary kid to hit against. I mean, he throws very down angle, he's got three pitch mix. So you heard what Ryan Feynman had to say about the pitching staff, but he's also been getting it done at the plate, Josh, leading Indiana with a 342 batting average. Very impressive from what he was last year at 239. Yeah, I mean, and, and he's done a lot to his swing. As, as, as you well know, Zan, I mean, he has really stepped up his game, hitting at a 342 clip. Uh, with, with two home runs, that's already as many home runs as he had last year. Runs better than 18. I mean, he's slugging the ball. He's getting on base. But this catching matchup this week, we talked about those pitchers. The other half of the battery is a very dynamic part of, of both of these teams. Nick D'Alessandro, he's very good himself. A 337 average for him. A home run, 16 runs better than He can slug the ball. He's, he has a higher slugging percentage than Ryan Feynman at the moment. These are two really good catchers. And you don't really see a lot of power hitting catchers these days just because they do so much work behind the plate. But these two teams really rely on their catchers. Yeah, Ryan Feynman said that he's really more concerned about his pitchers than he is at the plate. But he's really changed his swing since last year, and I got a chance to talk with him about that. We're with junior catcher Ryan Feynman with the Indiana Baseball Hoosiers. And Ryan, you lead the team in average now at 342 coming into this weekend. And you've really changed your swing starting with from last year. You're kind of bent at the knees, now you're more straight up. What kind of went into that? I mean, this summer I ended up having the surgery on my thumb, so it gave me a lot of time to kind of look over video of big leaguers and guys that I like on our team and kind of just see what I need to do to get my swing right. Last year I noticed I didn't really have much of a load when I'm all bent. It just wasn't getting anywhere with consistency. And so now that I have my hands on my shoulders and my legs straight, 
straight. It gives me a little more bail control to get to the ball. Who are some of the big leaders that you looked at specifically? Bellinger was the Bellinger. main one. Okay. Kind of just seeing how he's so straight up, getting down with his load. Uh -huh. I have a little bit more of a leg kick than him, but I like to think that I can try to get to that position that he gets with his hands. Yeah, and then your leg kick specifically. Last year you kind of had a little bit of a toe tap at the beginning, then you went to a little bit of hesitation. Now you're all the way up. I mean, how much of an advantage do you feel like with that specific part of your swing helps you now? I mean, I definitely feel like it helps my hands keep in the same place, get in the same position every time, but also just consistency of being able to put power to a ball now. Last year I felt like I could hit for more power, but I didn't, but this year I feel like I'm finally getting to the spot that I need to get to. And then with your hands last year, you're kind of just straight on with your shoulder, and now you're still there, but you have a little bit of movement too. I mean, is that out of the Bellinger book as well? I mean, it's just kind of a <laughs> rhythm thing, trying to get something going and kind of just staying with the same swing. I mean, when I start here, and I'm trying to get to here with my leg kick uh -huh. and kind of just getting the flow going with my load. So you see Ryan Feynman, he's really turned it around from last year and really this whole Indiana team just slugs the ball from top to bottom. You got Logan Kalitha leading it off and really just such a deep lineup. Whenever you have a guy like Matt Gorski batting in the six hole, that really shows how deep your lineup is. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's he's one of the leaders in batting average on this team, but then you guys have guys like Matt Lloyd, uh, Logan Sowers, Luke Miller in the middle of that order. I mean, this team kind of lives and dies by the long ball. It'd be interesting to see kind of later in the season if they can ma manufacture a few more runs, but if they're just hitting home runs, there's no need to manufacture because they're just going to hit them over the wall and that's really all you need. Yeah, and Purdue, their lineup's not as deep but in the middle, the three guys in the middle are really strong for them with Nick D'Alessandro, Jackson McGowan as well, really slugging the ball well for the Boilermakers. Yeah, I mean, they have three guys hitting 337 right now. I mean, that's that's pretty <laughs> impressive. It does drop off a little bit after that, but if you can get through that middle of the order, if you're Indiana pitching, then I think you're you're in a good spot. But those guys, it's, it's going to be tough outs. Those are three really, really tough outs. Absolutely. Indiana comes into the series ranked 10th in the nation. Let's take a look at the D1 baseball top 10. You see Florida on top, Stanford at number two, Ole Miss at number three, Oregon State at four, Arkansas at five. And then Josh, you pointed this out, eight, nine, and 10. All three of those teams, NC State, Kentucky, and Indiana, were in the same regional last year. Now they're all in the top 10. Yeah, I mean, that just shows you how incredibly tough that regional was. And Indiana, they, they battled as hard as they could, but they couldn't get out of it. It was Kentucky in the end. But, I mean, you see all these blue buds, Florida, Stanford, Ole Miss, Oregon State, Arkansas, Florida State. I mean, these are teams that are there year in and year out. And Indiana is trying to get up there as well. And then also let's take a look at the Big Ten standings as Indiana right now in ninth place just because they haven't played enough games. They're just one and one on the season. But you see they're right there with a 20 and five record. Purdue coming into this matchup in second in the Big Ten. All they played was a weekend series against Penn State. They got the sweep, but they're there 14 and 10 very early still in the Big Ten season. Oh, absolutely. But this this weekend's bit really big for Indiana just because they haven't played a lot of Big Ten games, like you said, with with all the rain and they only played two games at, at, at Iowa and they play Northwestern next week. So these two weekends back Back to back are very important for Indiana just to kind of boost their stock in the Big Ten. It's not a very deep conference in terms of teams that could potentially get into the NCAA tournament, so you have to take advantage of these type of series if you want to get in the tournament. Well, that's it for the Indiana baseball pregame show. First pitch between Indiana and Purdue is at 3:30. You can watch it on BTN to go. I'm Zampiarli. He's Josh Eastern. Thanks for watching.